Hello everyone, it's Chris and I'm going to be creating this beautiful, fluid, loose and flowy jellyfish. Alright, so I'm using a wet to wet technique. If you've seen my videos, then you've seen me use this technique a um, hundred times before. But I'm going to wet my paper. And so this is watercolor paper that I'm using and I'm just going to wet my paper pretty much in the shape of this jellyfish. So I'm painting the jellyfish sort of like it's swimming across the paper from... Um, from the right to the left side and I'm taking a Windsor & Newton watercolor brush just dip my brush in water and I'm just quickly you can see how fast that I'm painting I'm just quickly drawing or outlining this jellyfish uh, wherever I want the ink to go because I, for this one I want the inks to flow but I don't want them to spread too far outside of like the, the area of the jellyfish because it's already so much movement and I just want it to, um, I want it to be free and flowy, but I also want it to maintain its shape. So this is a calligraphy brush and I'll put a link to the brush below. I have dipped the brush into a few different inks and the inks that I'm using for this color is purple by Dr. PH Martin, also uh, magenta by Liquitex. So I've dipped it into those two colors and I'm pretty much just dabbing the ink in the area of like the top of the jellyfish and you can see just how beautiful I, I mean I think that this is just stunning the way that the inks have flown together and um, it's skipping like the dry parts of the paper so you know you leave a few dry areas so that you don't have just like this blob of color it just takes on like a shape of its own so I think that this is coming out really really beautiful so far I love it when I start an ink painting and then I, you know, like before I even get halfway into it, it's already looking just inspiring and, you know, just full of life. So for the top of the jellyfish, I'm going to put some little small dots just so we can have some variety. These, the inks, the ink splashes that I put first were pretty large. So I'm going to put some smaller um, ink pieces or ink dots towards the top and I'm just using the same mixture that I used for the first few brush strokes, but I am adding in black to some areas and then I'm adding in a little bit of red into other areas. So this, this area that I'm painting now, I've added in just a tiny drop of red ink. And so that's going to help create a nice uh, variety of shadows so that the jellyfish doesn't look too flat if you've ever seen a jellyfish swim you know that it's like full and you know it has a lot of volume and movement almost reminds me of like silk in water and if you feel like your watercolor paper has gotten too dry because this is all about movement so we don't want the watercolor paper to get too dry at all just add some more water and keep it going all right so i'm going to start to get into my favorite part and if you guys know like the proper name for the parts of the jellyfish you can leave it below if you want to but the, the like the strings that come out of the jellyfish the part that really creates like the movement like the top is like a globe and it has this you know this huge like volume like a circle but the bottom uh it's really what reminds me of fabric and I'm, I love, love, love movement. So this is my favorite part. So I'm just taking my brush. You can see that I've taken my brush on the side and not the tip like I was using at first. And I've just created some really um, permanent and some really bold brush strokes. And so that middle piece um, that's really bold with this magenta color is the it's like the boldest piece that I'm going to do the rest of the pieces or the rest of the brush strokes are going to be pretty delicate and pretty um, quick and you know I just want like the brush strokes to have an impression on the watercolor paper this like this textured um, brush that we're using on the textured watercolor paper I really want it to show through and just to look effortless and light Okay, so for the middle of the jellyfish, I'm adding in a golden yellow by Dr. P.H. Martin. 
and I don't want to overdo it for the yellow area so I'm just gonna lightly add it towards like the bottom um, of the top portion of the fish and like I said if the paper is getting too dry just add some water to you know sort of spread that ink out all right so I think that this is looking pretty beautiful but I want to add some more uh, deepness to it and some more shadows so I have dipped again this purple and magenta color into some black ink and this is what's really going to pull everything together. You can see that the ink is, has started to dry uh, pretty light. But this dark, like plummy, violet color is really going to pull it all in and just make the jellyfish look like it has this movement across our watercolor paper. So can you tell it's already making a difference? I'm going to add a little bit more of this color towards the bottom and just a few lines like towards the top of the fish just so you can tell that it's a circle. But I, in my opinion, I already feel like it's taking on a, like a sort of, sort of a circular uh, globe like shape at the top. So I'm just putting in a few more uh, stipples of color. And for this tutorial, you can see that I'm sticking within a certain uh, color story. So this is a color story of just like plums, pinks, um, lavender, and just a hint of yellow. And this is the part that you have to be careful on. Like when you're adding in details just to pull everything together to finalize it, um, it can be easily overdone or attempted to just do too much. So as you can see, I'm kind of hesitating or I'm kind of doing like this imaginary line before I actually put it down. Just because I kind of want to visualize how it's going to look. And I want to put down the lines very lightly if I'm going to start putting it down at this point. So I, want it, I want this to be... A really loose free flowy and um, you know was still maintaining the shape of the fish all right so the last thing that I'm doing this is a, a gel ink brush by um, Kirataki and it is in metallic silver I got it from Japan and I'll leave a link in the description box this pen you can't really see the lines but if you see the if you saw the painted up close and you'll be able to see that it's a metallic silver uh, but this brand of ink pens, ink brushes is just amazing. It's, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And I got it in silver, gold, and I think orange. But I would suggest getting it in. Honestly, I wish I had gotten in every color they got, they had. All right, so you can see that I've signed the painting. And that's pretty much it. If you wanted to add a few more lines i would say just use like a really thin um gel pen or a marker so that it doesn't overpower the jellyfish all right thank you guys again for watching um this jellyfish will be up on my website to purchase after this video i'll leave a link for that below and i will see you next week and please let me know if you try to paint this jellyfish and if you do Upload it on social media. Please tag me using the handle by Chris Keys. All right. Have a great week and see you on the next video. Ciao.